Look there. I told you I heard something. Now, you wouldn't be bragging again by any chance, would you, Jeff? Well, he'd have to be deaf not to hear a whole troop of cavalry. Well, now, ain't they right pretty? If they weren't army folks, I might cotton to them. I wonder what they're doing in Texas. We've got all the Indians quieted down. Yeah, and if we didn't have, what good would they be? When it comes to mixing with Indians and outlaws, I'd rather be backed up by a couple of rangers like you two boys. And I would that whole outfit down yonder. Looks like one of the wagons is having trouble. I'll go see what's wrong. You two ride back to headquarters. Now, Roy, don't go sticking your neck out. What's the matter here, Mr. Nelson? Wheels off, sir. All right, see if we can get it rolling. Yes, sir. Nothing but trouble from one end of Texas to the other. Why did the United States ever take this wilderness into the Union anyway? Good morning, sir. Who are you? Captain Rogers, Texas Rangers. I thought I could help your men with that wheel. Thank you. The cavalry can take care of itself. My father didn't mean to be rude, but you see, we've been traveling since early this morning, and I'm afraid the hot sun has been too much for him. Don't you dare apologize for me. You see, he wants to apologize for himself. Oh, that's all right, Colonel. Now, if it was me, I'd take that extra wagon tongue and lift the rear end. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Very good idea. Mr. Nelson. Yes, sir. Did you hear the ranger's suggestion? Yes, sir. Well, then, get busy and take it. Very good, sir. You better get down, miss. You haven't told me your name yet. I might need it for my report. Well, I'm Janice Ford, and this is my father, Colonel Ford. Very pleased to make your acquaintance, sir. Oh, that's all right, that's all right. Wagon's ready, sir. All right. I'll help her up. All right. a member of the state senate, you know the conditions of the treasury. We haven't sufficient funds to support the rangers any longer. Besides, their work is being taken over by the United States Cavalry. The Cavalry is unaccustomed to police work. They won't be able to handle the situation. Governor, if the citizens of Texas are going to be without protection, I shall resign from the state senate. I'm very sorry to hear that, Senator Harvey. But there's nothing I can do. There's something I can do. I will appeal to every rancher, cattleman, and storekeeper who needs protection. I'll give them a state police of their own. Very well. I have no alternative. If you will permit me, I will dictate the official order. To all officers and men of the Texas Rangers. <laughs> Coyotes growling, they're part of the heart of the song of the West. Loping along, singing a song of the West. The north wind howling, the coyotes growling. Just a minute, boys. Get some 
the governor, and it's bad news. To all officers and men of the Texas Rangers, it is my unfortunate duty to bring to a close your years of long and faithful service. You are to return to your homes with the thanks of the people for the service you have rendered to Texas, both as a republic and now as a state in the Union. It is with the greatest regret that I hereby terminate the organization known as the Texas Rangers. Doesn't he also know he's terminating law and order in Texas? Well, fellas, there's nothing I can say except good luck. A mule-eared blue coat would get lost if they turn him loose in a big place like Texas. It wouldn't surprise me to see the whole state overrun with outlaws inside of six months. Well, they better stay away from my ranch. You're lucky you've got a ranch to go to and a wife. I hope she still remembers her husband. Where are you heading for, Roy? Hey, you wouldn't ask him that if you'd hear him talk in his sleep like I do. That little brother of yours been dreaming about that pretty girl he met in the army wagon. It's my opinion Roy's about to join up with the cavalry. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. Start riding drill in the morning. You ain't gonna learn him how to ride, are you? <laughs> he cut his teeth on the saddle horn. I've seen you Texans ride, <laughs> but it's not the way they taught at West Point. Well, I'll try anything once. Rogers, I'm talking to an officer. It's customary to say sir. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. Captain of the Rangers, that won't do you much good here until you've proven yourself. It may take you a long time to raise yourself to a corporal or a sergeant. Well, that's all right with me. He means, uh, yes, sir. You'll be expected to learn the manual of firearms. Well, howdy, miss. Why, well, hello, Ranger. Can I help you up? Rangers are pretty informal about some things, such as helping young ladies in distress. I'm afraid we're a little more strict in the cavalry. You, what's your name? Oh, me? Now, don't get an idea that I'm going to join your army for three or four years. No, sir. Then what do you want here? Well, I used to out for General Zach Taylor over in the San Juan country. Well, I thought if I could work for you a month or two, maybe. Yes, yes. Well, I'll speak to the Colonel after mess. Yeah, do that, Bob. This way, Private Rogers. You know, I think the cavalry will show the Rangers how to run things down here. <laughs> if the cavalry don't watch out, somebody's coming along and pick up Texas and walk away with it. <laughs> You haven't got any spit in the back, have you, beside it? <laughs> the possibilities, Burke. That's why I decided to put you in charge. You want me to get the same men we used in the last election? That's up to you. I want men like yourself, who won't be suspected, who will take orders and keep their mouths shut. Well, the ones that want protection will certainly pay plenty for it. And the others, <laughs> perhaps they can be persuaded. Before you start trailing that herd to market, don't you think you better arrange for protection from the state patrol? I'll take my chances. They're taking big chances, all right. There's plenty of outlaws on that trail.
Lieutenant, my brother lives near here. Do you mind if I stop off and see him? I'll catch up with you later. Sorry, Sergeant, but we're on patrol duty. You'll have to stay with the troops. Yeah, that ain't signal smoke. That's the fire. No, probably only some brush burning. There's outlaws at Ken Rogers Ranch, and if you hurry, you may be in time to save their lives. Forward, get up, ho! Jeff. Yeah, he's plumb done out. Throw that engine over there. They're all dead. There's tracks leading out that way. We'll follow them. going to cross the Rio Grande after him? And stir up a lot of international complications with Mexico? I'm afraid not. Well, that wouldn't stop the Rangers. Where's Sergeant Rogers? Why, he's back with his brother, of course. You better go back and help him. Report to the post as soon as you've finished. Troop forward! Mighty fine ranger, Roy. One of the best in the whole state of Texas. We're gonna miss him, Jeff. We rode together, fought together. I know. It ain't easy, son. I'd like to use these on the men that killed him. Are you going looking for him? hoping you would. But don't go looking for Indians. Because the man who did this rode shod horses. I noticed that in the murdered Indian. Only a white man would think of trying to throw the blame on the Comanches that way. Yeah. Because Indians take their dead with them.
Jeff, I'll see you in a few minutes. about your brother and his wife. Thank you, sir. Of course, you'll understand why I want my discharge. You're discharged? Yes, sir. So I can go after the men who killed my brother. You can't do that. You're assigned in the army, and you must stay till your enlistment runs out. If you have any definite evidence that'll lead you to the murderers, you can depend on the cavalry to take action. But can anyone depend on the cavalry? Do you realize what you're saying? Do you realize that my brother might be alive today if your cavalry used common horse sense? What have you done for Texas? Turned the whole state over to the outlaws. People being robbed and murdered. Your cavalry tied hand and foot with official red tape. Sergeant! That'll be all. You're confined to quarters till further orders. Yes, sir. We're camping tonight on the old campground. Give us a song. Our weary hearts, a song of home and friends we love so dear. Many are the hearts that are weary tonight, wishing for the war to cease. getting my cold. It's very cold out here. Why, I'd be glad to. You're not running out on us. But Father thinks you're one of his best soldiers. I'm sorry, miss, but I can't help it. find the quarters. Did you find out anything, Jeff? I found out a plenty. There were some men from the new state patrol over at your brother's ranch just before he was killed. Trying to sell him their brand of protection. He run them off the place. So that's the way the state patrol works. Well, it looks like it. Here's something I picked up at the crossroads. The country's cluttered up with it. Jeff, I've got to get to that meeting. Well, there's nothing to stop in it except some iron bars and a whole troop of cavalry. Well, I'm getting out anyway. Well, just how do you propose to do it? Walk out sideways through a crack in the wall or wait for a prairie dog to dig a hole through the floor? I'm riding out on a cloud. 
just the same, I better have Trigger ready for you. <laughs> the boundary, Sergeant. Ladies and gentlemen, most of you are familiar with the reasons why I resigned from the state Senate. It was my contention that the United States Cavalry could not adequately protect the citizens of this state. Some of you have suffered the personal loss of friends and family at the hands of the outlaw. Others have seen their homes burned, the labor of years destroyed. All of you must be aware of the need for protection. It is for that reason I have organized what is known as the State Patrol. It is with pride that I introduce to you the man who will head the state patrol, Mr. Morgan Burke. <laughs> Naturally, I cannot afford to bring the state patrol into Prairie City unless most of the ranchers, town merchants, and citizens contribute to its support. That is why I am making this appeal to you tonight. I call upon you to become the first community in Texas to organize against the outlaws. And I call upon you to think twice before you stampede it into taking his patrol. I wouldn't let this speaker or anybody else bulldoze me into paying for protection. I'm not telling you people what to do. I'm just warning you. You don't know who his men are or where they come from. If you want to believe the word of an ex-ranger, you're heading into trouble. You're paying taxes, aren't you? If you want protection, send word to the governor. Ask him to reorganize the Texas Rangers. Their honesty's never been questioned. Maybe there is something in what he said. It was a ranger that's good enough for me. Gentlemen, gentlemen. You can't let him break up this meeting. He talked like an outlaw. He didn't sound like an outlaw. I'll take a ranger's word against anybody. Thank you. 
wasn't my fault Rogers had to show up at that meeting. It was your fault he got away. And if that isn't trouble enough, the citizens took his advice. And they're getting the governor to come down here and investigate the outlaw situation. Do you realize he might decide to keep us from going ahead with the state patrol? He might even reorganize the rangers? You ought to be able to do something about that. Well, I'll do everything I can. I've made arrangements to be with him from the minute he arrives. Everything should go like clockwork, sir. Review the troops when the governor arrives, the firing of the salute, and the reception afterward. Janice could help with the decorations. He's clever at that sort of thing. Janice? Your uh, daughter left uh, the post early this morning, sir. What's that? I told her never to leave this post without a proper escort. Which way did she go? She started for town. Oh, so that's it. Been talking about a new dress for a couple of days and had to have it for the governor's visit. I'll ride in and see that she gets back safely. Mm. Surprised to see me? Well, you can't blame me. I never expected to see you again. Oh, I'm sorry you had to think that. I mean, if it made any difference to you. It certainly didn't. You're a dessert. made me drop that box with my new dress in it. I'm sorry, miss, but I hadn't finished talking to you yet. Well, you certainly do use drastic methods. Well, I couldn't let you go thinking I'd quit the army without a good reason. Well? Well, it was something I figured the cavalry might not get around to. I know I'm taking a chance of stopping you this way, but I just had to see you again. Well, if you think I'll keep your secret, you're mistaken. Now, if you'll please let me down. Somebody's heading this way. It might be the cavalry. Hang on. <laughs> Nothing's happened to her. Right back and tell the colonel. Spread out and search for her. Why didn't you holler for help? I hope you're pleased with yourself. Kidnapping me. Oh, I'm taking you most of the way back to the fort. I prefer to walk. It's all right with me, but it's at least five miles. I'll still walk. The fort's over this way. You're going to get awful tired walking. I'll just ride along with you. Just pretend I'm not here. We found your daughter's horse, sir, but she's gone. The rest of the men are looking for her. Found the call to arms. Turn out the garrison. Test it.
from a western love song. Words cannot express all your loveliness. So I hum a western love song. Others may sing of the starry sky, but I'd rather sing of the stars in your eyes. I guess I'd better be riding along. Oh, wait. I'm sorry, but I've got to be leaving now. filled with outlaws and Indians. You ought to know better. Well, you don't have to bawl me out like one of your own soldiers. Aren't you glad to find me? After all, I was kidnapped. Kidnapped? By whom? An outlaw. What did he look like? Well, he was a man about 50 and very ugly. And a long gray beard down to here. Great Caesar's ghost, the governor. Get up! He was an old man with a long gray beard. Bring her a horse over here. Rain? No one seems to be around. Hello! No sentries on duty? No one left to guard the post? No doubt Colonel Forbes will be able to explain. <laughs> Hiya, Colonel. Senator Harvey. A most unusual welcome, Colonel. I owe you an apology, sir. Oh, not at all. Official welcomes are decidedly boring. <laughs> this has been quite a novelty. Glad you stayed on my trail, Jeff. I was wishing I could talk to you. Well, that's right, I figured on. Tell me, what happened at the meeting, Roy? There's a man named Burke helping Harvey organize this state patrol, and, well, he's wanted in Missouri as an outlaw. Hmm, yeah, huh? Well, I never hear on the skunk changing his habits. I figure Burke and his men are back at some of these outlaw raids, but I may have a little trouble proving it. Hey, I smell a fire coming, Roy. Now, if you need any help, you just call on me and some of the old rangers. We help you out. You pass the word along to stand by for a smoke signal from the old ranger headquarters. Where'll you be? If I camp on Burke's trail, I might find out something. I'm heading for his ranch now. Well, that's sort of risky business, ain't it, bub? Well, you old mosshead, you never worried about me before. Well, you know, Roy, something might happen to you. You might get killed or something. Now, mind you, I'm just saying you might, understand? Just what are you getting at? Well, if something should happen to you, Roy, could I have... First claim on that saddle, you earn. Well, so that's what you're worrying about. Well, I'd hate to ride into St. Louis on this old wore-out saddle I've been using. I'd be plumb ashamed if I would for a fact. All right, Jeff, you can have first claim. Kenna? Now, don't forget!
everything's all set. I told them to bring the horses over the border. All right, let's go. to show these Prairie City people that they need the protection of the state patrol. So this is the setup. Roberts, you ride into the fort and draw the cavalry off to Bryson Canyon. Tell them there's a raid. Hi, right, Sandy. The rest of us will head for Prairie City and stick out the bank. All right, Roberts, get started. Don't try anything. Turn around. his horse the other side of the rock. Get his horse, Murphy. What are you waiting for, Roberts? Get going. Seems to me there was another ex-ranger that had guns like these. And he didn't care much for the state patrol either. I thought that was why you killed him. Listen to this. Talking like he's going to do something about it. Rogers, you make one move too many. Boys, look at your new leader. He's riding into Prairie City with us. Everything's all over. They'll find him with a bullet hole in his hide. We couldn't ask for anything sweeter. Next ranger leading a white horse outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> Kidnapping this force. A dangerous outlaw, wouldn't you say? Not at all. I found him to be quite a gentleman and very handsome. Nonsense. You told me yourself he had long gray whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> you seem to have taken quite a liking to him. Maybe I have. Your cigar, Governor. Uh, Governor, we believe that the Texas Rangers ought to be reorganized. They gave us the only protection we've ever had. But we're short of funds. Besides, when the United States took over, they became responsible for law and order. Not my fault that Washington expects me to patrol all of Texas with a few troops of cavalry. What do you think, Senator Harvey? I agree with the citizens. They should have protection. But why should the state pay for it when an auxiliary organization can be formed at the expense of those who directly benefit? Bryson Valley, White Horse Outlaws attacking the settlers. Nothing. Take a troop and go after them. You can't tell me that horse come all the way from Bryson Valley.
must have passed them. Maybe they turned in that old barn back there. We better go back. No, we better get to the bank before they do. What? You better get ready to be here any minute. Pull down the blinds. Close those doors. Get that money into the safe. Smoke? No, that's from headquarters. Let's go. There's that smoke signal. Come on. All right. Boys. 
That range is two jumps ahead of us. He broke up the whole outfit. He hasn't got anything on me. No, well, maybe you'd like to stay here and wait for him. You can't run out on me. No. You heard what he said. All right, take his gun. It's a good thing you got here, Lieutenant. You're right, Senator. Don't let him talk his way out. He's been back in these outlaws, and I can prove it. Why, that's preposterous. You're not going to take his word against mine. I don't know what you're up to, Rogers. I'm taking you all back to the post. Well, that suits me. Don't be too sure. There's a court-martial facing you on a charge of desertion. Sergeant Rogers will please stand. Court has reached a decision. Sergeant Rogers, we are aware of your exceptional services to Texas in ridding the state of a corrupt and lawless organization. Nevertheless, the United States Army cannot overlook the charge of desertion. You have been found guilty, but in view of the circumstances, the only punishment will be your immediate discharge from the service. They've thrown them out of the Army. But, Colonel, they told me this trial was only a formality. Now that I've caught my brother's murders, I don't want to leave the cavalry. I think you will. Just had word from the governor. He is reorganizing the Texas Rangers and wishes you to know your commission is waiting for you. Yeah Roy, you couldn't have asked for anything better. Janet, you've been spying on this court martial. Regulations strictly forbidden. That's fine. Can I have my discharge from the Army, too? <clears throat> Gentlemen, court dismissed. Congratulations. Thanks, Lieutenant. Let me know if he runs away again. Go on and kiss her. Nobody's looking. 